Hello and welcome to News Click. Did the US almost launch a war on Iran? According to media reports, yesterday the United States defense establishment was entirely prepared for missile strikes on key facilities in Iran, but the US and Don President Donald Trump withdrew at the last moment. To talk more about this, we have with us Prabir Purkaista. Hello, Prabir. Prabir, so the media reports say that in response to Iran downing a US drone, uh, the U.S. military establishment was completely prepared for a full, at least a limited strike on key facilities. So how do you evaluate this possibility? Was it actually the beginning of a conflict or was it just saber rattling to, uh, in response to the drone? You know, let's look at the wider context. Right. The kind of sanctions that the U.S. has imposed in Iran are actually equivalent to war. Right. In fact, if you look at what the international law says, mm -hmm. that these sanctions are in fact acts of war. Right. So let's therefore say that they have been in a tacit war scenario for quite some time. Right. For Iran to have retaliated or not is of course an open question. In this particular case, the drone, where did it fall, when, uh, what was the actual location, is something we need to d discuss right. later. But there is no question that for Iran and US, they have been on a collision course for some time and each is expecting the other to back down. Yeah. The Trump's argument regarding the sanctions or the US administration's arguments regarding the sanction is that they have, Iran not only should give up all future nuclear weapon making capability, which means dismantle their entire nuclear infrastructure, right. irrespective of whether it is for peace, yeah. for uh, shall we say radioactive isotopes for medical purposes, anything. And it should also give up its missile capabilities, rocket capabilities, and should also not support Hezbollah, Houthis, or Syrian forces on the ground. So effectively, it is to ask Iran to disarm completely and submit, essentially surrender to the US, Israeli, and uh, Saudi forces. Now, that's something Iran, it's 80 million people, it has fought a war with Iraq, supported at the time by US and, uh, and uh, Britain and France and other powers. So I think that's not likely. In this particular case, when you talk of you know, the conflict with the Trump administration, as far as the rest of the world is concerned, we really don't care right. whether they had a scenario where the defense establishment was preparing for a, uh, or a strike and Trump had actually a given signal or not, had pulled back or not, I think are irrelevant to the rest of us. The question is, US has been poised for new military action against Iran right. and Iran has been responding right. in different ways. Yeah. Now, there have been some arguments that they also did launch uh, this tanker, right. uh, so shall we say, sabotage right. activities. But there's no question that if you see the Houthis step, stepped up uh, drone attacks, it's very clear that they have got new drones over there. It's quite likely Iran is a source, and that is also being directed now at the oil infrastructure of Saudis, and also the last one, which was a couple of days back, yesterday, that was also at uh, an airport, which did suffer some damage, and also now it is desalination plants. It's important to understand electricity, electricity and desalination are also crucial to Saudi Arabia's infrastructure, and 75% of Saudi Arabian water comes from desalination plants, which are coupled with the uh, power plants. So this infrastructure, if it is hit, then it is also catastrophic consequences for Saudi Arabia. So Iran is letting people know that they are not without any, shall we say, capabilities with respect to the sanctions. Without going to war, they are in a position to make this whole, uh, shall we say, sanctions and uh, trying the containment of, you know, of uh, Iran by Israel, United States, and Saudi Arabia, they are willing to make it costly. Right. So their argument is either you negotiate after removing the sanctions or this state of near war which you have wreaked upon us will continue. Right. I think that's a message Iran is trying to send. Right. And of course, this particular case, the drone, right. The question, it's not a usual drone. You know, we tend to think of drones which hover on the sports fields, uh, which comes in India, also the marriage ceremonies taking pictures from there. These are drones which are like toys. This is a drone which is bigger than most passenger aircraft. It was flying at 60, it can fly at a ceiling of 60,000 feet and above. It was worth 
anything between 130 to 200 million dollars, not because that's a cost to the drone, because it packed a huge amount of uh, equipment, which is to take pictures at different spectra, really map out the quote unquote, the enemy territories, right. armaments, uh, defensive as well as offensive. So that's the purpose of this drone. So it has a quasi offensive purpose. It's basically to map out what would be see it what would be the quote unquote enemies our air defense as well as other forces disposition and therefore uh, the fact it has to come close to iran's borders did it enter the, uh, the territorial waters above the territorial waters something that we can discuss later but there's no question these are not friendly drones right. and they're really large pieces of uh, flying machinery and they're packed with stealth and other equipment if it falls in iran's hands it would really help Iran a lot right. in learning technologies, and it would be interest both, both Russia and China as well. Right. So, uh, going a bit further into the drone incident per se, so uh, how do you also see the Iranian act of downing this drone? Because like you said, there's a bit of controversy over whether it was inside the Iranian uh, nautical water, water space or it was just outside, which the Americans are claiming. So, is it also an act to indicate that these are some of the options that we have, in addition to, of course, say, blocking the Strait of Hormuz. You see, let, let's look at the path itself. Right. That the drone actually flew in this direction. In fact, it went through the Straits of Hormuz and was taking a return pass. Right. Now, as we know the nature of this particular uh, Global Hawk uh, drone, that it, it takes a actually it has to come quite close to the coast because it takes a huge number of pictures and also maps out the uh, enemy's defenses uh, completely. So the closer it comes, obviously the better is the resolution. So it was obviously making a pass again over Iran's, uh, shall we say, or close to Iran's maritime boundary or its coastline. Now, the issue that comes is the, Iranian, the Iranians have also shown a drone path. So have the Americans. They don't differ by too much. What the Iranians have shown is when the, it was going on its return path, it actually veers towards the coast and it crossed into the Iranian territorial waters and it was eight nautical miles off its coast. This is what the Iranians have said. The Americans have said it is 34 kilometers away from the nearest coast point of Iran. Now, it's not very clear from this uh, statement whether the mean as measured from the drone to the ground or measure, measured horizontally, what this 34 kilometers are. But assuming that it was 34 kilometers measured horizontally and not in this particular taking height into account, which will actually reduce uh, the, the horizontal distance quite a bit. But assuming that it was really a horizontal measurement, it would still make a difference of say about five to six kilo, that it would be five to six kilometers or uh, four to five nautical miles outside, three to four nautical miles outside the Iranian uh, territorial waters, which is real 12 nautical miles. The interesting part is if we take what the Iranians are saying, then what it would seem to show that it was veering towards Iran's territorial waters, because only that explains how they have ex got the debris of the drone in their territorial waters. They have said it was shot down at eight kilometers, uh, eight uh, nautical miles above uh, Iran's, uh, uh, I mean, eight nautical, nautical miles away distance away from the coast. So it's well within their territorial waters, and they have said they've recovered also drone, right. the drone, uh, okay. parts of the drone, drone, drone debris. It would also be explained if the American uh, map is correct that it was actually veering towards the Iranian uh, border, Iranian coast, when it was shot down. Right. So that will also explain the trajectory and why the drone debris fell inside. So I would say that looking at all of this, the more important picture for us is not exactly where the drone was shot down, is also the fact the Iranian air defense was able to pinpoint a drone which was at a distance of 60 feet or above in terms of height. 
60,000 feet and above, at a height of 60,000 feet and above, and also able to shoot it down. Right. So this is not a minor issue, because the reason that these drones, the reconnaissance drones or this kind of spy drones fly at this height is because they are supposed to be immune to surface to air missiles. The fact the Iranians could shoot it down, that is also significant because it shows that they have really, maybe the S-300s the Russians have given them or they have bought are important here. They have really good air defense facilities, uh, radar facilities. They have pinpointed where it was and they, they have been able to strike it with a missile. So I think those are do also show that this capability today, if there is a war, Certainly, the Iran can be bombed back to Stone Age. That's possible. But it will come at a huge cost right. to the Americans, to any other forces that might ally with them. Certainly, it will mean serious damage to Saudi Arabian infrastructure because of the Houthis, uh, who are also fighting a war in Yemen against Saudi. So they are, they'd be delighted to have a go at the Saudis at the moment. And if they have uh, drone uh, equipment of the quality that Iran can deliver, yeah. and if they've just got a so small sample of them, it will really devastate the Saudis, uh, Saudi infrastructure. Saudis have proved to be very poor fighters. Yeah. So that doesn't help them too much. So I think this this is uh, something it's that, that makes it clear that Iranian capabilities are not going to be like Iraq's. Right. They have a much bigger country, they have much more resources, they have had more time to prepare, and their offensive capabilities are significant enough for causing damage to Americans and their allies in the region. Right. And although we have discussed this before, it might be good to once again take a look at what would be the immediate impact in terms of uh, Iranian responses to, say, uh, a U.S. assault for that matter, and how would this affect the global situation? So, As we have discussed earlier, that the biggest oil choke point in the world is the Straits of Hormuz, where, as we can see, there's a, you can see the line of tankers that flow through the Straits of Hormuz. You can see the amount of oil that flows through it, the choke point right. uh, that it is, 19 a million barrels per day is a flow of oil through Straits of Hormuz. The three countries directly affected by this, four actually, is India. It has huge oil imports and it gets it from the Straits of Hormuz because Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, United Arab Emirates, most of their oil shipments takes place, takes place through the Straits of Hormuz. So that is one. Then you have China. Korea, Japan, all four countries are going to be affected and affected severely if this uh, attack uh, takes place, the war takes place. Right. If the war takes place, let's be very clear, oil shipment from this area is going to stop because infrastructure, the pipelines, as well as the uh, tankers, they're not going to flow from, through that. It's very easy to sink one, sh sink one tanker, one or two vessels, and the Straits of Hormuz then become impossible for the next three months. Yeah. India gets 70 to 80 percent of its oil from the Straits of through the Straits of Hormuz, yeah. or uh, countries which are in the littoral states of the Straits of Hormuz, uh, or up, up in the upper regions of the of the area. So, if Straits of Hormuz close, we are going to see a huge huge crisis in India, we are going to see actually rationing of oil. It's not going to be so easy to supply for the rest of the world to supply through tankers around the Cape and bring it to India. It will happen, but it will take time and it's got a huge extra cost. The price of oil will go through the roof, but the sheer availability, suddenly losing 80 percent of the oil is a disaster. I think this is something that is going to be true also for China, it's going to be true for uh, Korea, it's going to be true for Japan. China at least has access to Russia, has access to overland also to Iran, 
though the pipelines are still in the process of being made. But I think that this is going to be a global disaster of a major variety. And you can see oil prices go up to, as I said, $200, $300 earlier. You also see a, certainly a global recession. So all of this put together, I think we are being very, in a very bad place to, uh, for, this, for any war to break out of this. I think so is globally, the global economy at the moment. It's not doing particularly well. The last thing I'll say is I have not understood why other countries are still muted in their response to what is happening because it affects them directly. Why is India, Japan, and Korea, which are supposed to be close to the United States, not saying don't do this? Russians have said, you have Putin who has said this is a catastrophe for the world. Uh, the Chinese Prime Premier has said also that this is going to be a catastrophe. But the European Union, and countries like India, South Korea, and Japan, their sort of muted uh, protest, muted statements, I just don't understand because they're all of them are going to be vitally affected by this. Thank you, Prabhupada. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching News Click.